In this video, we're going to explain how to conduct individual analysis using Guppy. First, open a terminal window or an Anaconda prompt window on Windows. First, open a terminal or Anaconda prompt window and activate the environment that you've created in the first installation step. Then you're going to navigate to the folder where the code is present using the cd command. After that, go to the GitHub page and copy the command, the panel serve command, into the terminal or Anaconda prompt window. This will open a browser page that'll be the main input parameters GUI that you'll use to run Guppy. Okay, so this is the main input parameters GUI that you'll use for running Guppy. Once you've opened the input parameters GUI, you wanna navigate to the location where your files are present that you're going to analyze. Then move the entire folder containing the files to analyze to selected files on the right hand side. You can also select multiple folders here for batch analysis. I'm going to walk you through how this process works for running individual analysis, but for changing the input parameters themselves below, watch the input parameters video. To continue with your analysis, once you've set your input parameters, click save to file in step one and you'll see that the location where that input parameters file is saved is listed. Next, you can click Open Store Names GUI. This will open a new GUI page where you'll select the data that you want to analyze. To do this, highlight the relevant store names or signals and move them to the right. Once you've done that, click Select Store Names. On your first time using Guppy, you'll see that this populates the names that you've just selected below. Now you'll type in the corresponding names for Guppy to read. There's instructions on the left-hand side for the correct nomenclature to name your signals as well as any TTLs that you may be using. Be sure to keep consistent between animals as well as between different store names and signals. After you've given a name for each store name, you can decide if you want to overwrite a previous store list file or create a new one. Now that you've saved your store name store list, you can close out of this GUI and return to the input parameters GUI. You can now read the raw data by clicking the button for step three. To check if there's any errors and to see if the progress is finished, you can look in your terminal window 
to make sure that no errors have been outputted. Throughout this process, you can always check your terminal or Anaconda prompt window to make sure that you don't have any errors. After reading the raw data has finished, indicated by the progress bar stopping, you can move to the next step to extract the timestamps and apply any corrections. When this finishes, you'll see figures pop up showing you your control, sig and control isospestic signal as well as your signal. Should you need to remove any artifacts, this would be the time to do it, but we'll show you that in a separate video. Next, in step five, click to run the PSTH computation or Perry Stimulus Time Histogram. When this step finishes, you'll see two figures outputted showing the transient detection in the orange dots. Now you're ready to visualize your data. You can do this using the visualization GUI. Click on open visualization GUI and another browser tab will open with the visualization GUI. In this GUI, you'll have two tabs at the top, one for the peristimulus time histograms and one with heat maps. First, we'll look at the peristimulus time histogram tab. Here, there are two traces being shown. In the top one, you can change the event that's being shown with this drop-down menu. The bottom, you can use to look at multiple events by selecting them here. Now, as you can see, we need to change the y-axis, which we can do with this sliding bar. You also have options to change the x-axis, the width height of the plot, the y-label, and so on. Further, using Guppy, you can display the mean and error as shown here, or for example, all of the events, as well as the average. As you can see here, now in the thin lines, I have each individual trace, as well as the average trace in the dark black line. There are also different save options that you can use. You can save as a PNG, an SVG, or both. To do this, just select the option you'd like to do and then click the Save button. You can also use a visualization GUI to create heat maps. Here you can see a visualization of every individual trial for, in this case, rewarded nose pokes in DLS. And again, there are options to change uh, the width and height of the heat map, as well as the color being used. Once again, you can also save this as a PNG, an SVG, or as both. At the top of the color map list are our recommended options that use the most accurate representation of a color spectrum. But there are also many more options as you can see. Now that the data has been saved, you can go into the folder where your uh, file was located. And you'll notice that you have an input parameters folder and within the the output itself you'll see that you now have many different files saved 
So all of the information was saved as an either HDF5 or H5 file that can be read by other applications. And in addition, there's also CSV files with relevant information that you've chosen to analyze using the input parameters. You can also look at the frequency and amplitude of transients. For example, here, I'm looking at the average frequency per minute and the average amplitude of transients for the entire session in my DMS recording. And I can look at any peaks and areas under the curve that I've asked Guppy to calculate. 